In our first story, Interior Minister Ambrose Derry has condemned the beating of Joy News reporter Latif Idris by the police last month. The assault by about four officers at the police CID headquarters during the arrest of the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC left the reporter, our good friend, with multiple injuries, particularly to his skull. While condemning the attack, Ms. Ambrose Derry cautioned journalists to identify appropriate channels of contact in volatile situations to prevent further confrontations in the future. He's been speaking on the sidelines of an event organized by the UNDP to launch two kits for tackling extremism on the continent. I think that's most unfortunate. You know, in, in the collaboration, we need also to do a lot of uh, knowledge transfer and, and whether this government is not in favor of any uh, uh, member of the press uh, being uh, tortured. We'll be the last. I mean, we benefited from it. And you do know Mr. President is one of those who started opening the, pushing back the frontiers for this. Thing. What I think happened in that time was a misunderstanding of the various rules. When you go to an area where the security forces are acting, officers are acting, you need to identify the right person to talk to. We have PRs among them who would react to you. But if you go to the frontline actor, some of these unfortunate situations are there. That, that, that's not to say that we agree with what is saying, but we are saying that we could work together in each other. So we condemn what happened, but we would like to say that you should engage the right people. The man at the front is told to push back people and secure the place. That's what he knows. So a microphone is not part of his uh, you know, uh, instructions. And you do know that in spite of the fact that I'm the head of uh, Polika Head with authority of uh, the security agencies, the decision to arrest or not to arrest on the spot is that of the police. So at that stage, we would encourage uh, the police is doing very well, opening up now on TV and that's what I, I would encourage the IGP to increase this interaction in the bid to let the media understand the roles of the various police people and to build very good uh, collaboration because we need the media. Without the media, we cannot make it. I've always said that the security is improving because all stakeholders are playing a part. Media, security experts, traditional rulers, individual students, all of us are playing a part. So we do not claim it to be the success of one person. Some of the things sometimes I experience with you people. You are very, you know, good, consistent and focused. And sometimes you ask questions like, have we lost control? And I say, no, we haven't lost control. But sometimes I cannot go beyond that. Because to go beyond that is to tell you the, the strategies that we've got in place to check. And immediately I do that, I've divulged it. So sometimes there appears to be a gap. And sometimes it is the confidence that we have and the commitment that I have is misunderstood for arrogance. But I believe that going forward, we need to understand ourselves better. The country's procurement system is not fit for purpose. And that's according to the chief executive of Imani Africa, Franklin Kujo, who is calling for a massive enhancement or overhaul of our procurement system. Well, commenting on the state's OBS scandal on Joy News Carrying Affairs show PM Express on Thursday, Mr. Franklin Kujo explained danger looms if Ghana continues to operate under the current procurement system and laws. We have said at Imani that look, for the procurement system we have now to be fit for purpose. We should tender everything. In fact, we should know who the contractors are, subcontractors are, the sums they are actually asking, and to be publicly made available. In fact, especially when the units involved are over 100,000 units. There's nothing we are procuring here that are so unique. Nothing in this country should be so sourced. In fact, so when I hear, for instance, our current president say, well, look at me, I'm not like Mahama. So sourcing, we reduce it to 50%. Exactly what were you procuring to even get to 50%? Toilet bowls, roofing sheets. These are not things on mass, right? The whole procurement system is not fit for purpose. And if you want to get serious about dealing with corruption, it's actually procurement. If you look at this OBS thing, it has all the hallmarks of procurement shenanigans. Because no serious procurement board will be sitting and be looking on carelessly for the sums to keep jumping. I mean, who in his right mind would say that, well, listen, we had 2 million customers, but we wanted to start the 400,000. All of a sudden, we realized that 400,000 is not 400,000 we have. We have 2 million. The thing kept jumping and jumping. That's padding the numbers. That's like a Ponzi scheme. Nobody does that. 
And Mr. Franklin Kujo is also disappointed that SNED in its whole existence is returning only 13 billion Ghana cities, which he says is below the belt. Look, SNED, by the way, did you know that SNED's portfolio in all its assets is about 13 billion Ghana cities as we speak? Just when we did the SNED reforms, the second year, and well, the second year alone has given us almost 9 billion Ghana cities. How long ago? This was just 2010 or 20, uh, 2011 when the reforms kicked in, actually 2012. That's the monies we realized through the private managed pension schemes. 9 billion cities in all its existence from day one, which has become a cash cow, is only returning 13 billion. And the reasons are because of these kinds of crotchety deals, that's, scams, that's, that's... Ponzi schemes. Which makes me think that when we did the Senate reforms, we should have made Senate get maybe 5% and rather have the second year have about 30-40%. Members of the Germany Boat Owners Association in the South Dine District of the Volta region have embarked on a strike action to protest the hoarding of subsidized premix fuel by middlemen in the trade. According to the association, activities of the middlemen have greatly impeded the operations, hence the move to embark on a strike to bring to the attention of authorities that this happening development and also ensure it is addressed. Fred Kwame Asari filed the following report. Fishing has been a major source of income for residents of Germany. Activities of these fishermen translate into promoting the growth of the economy in the South Dine district. However, the upsurge of operations of middlemen in the premix 3 has greatly affected the works of fishermen, adversely affecting their livelihood and local economy. And Okamati is one of the affected fishermen. We don't get premix 4 to buy because they sell it on days when we are gone fishing. The middlemen buy and sell to us at higher prices. The development led to a strike action compelling authorities to engage members of the Germany Boat Owners Association to resolve the issue and ensure they resume their operations. The chairman of the National Premix War Committee, Neil Ante Bannerman, who was unhappy with development, suggested a team should be set up to monitor the sale of Premix War in the area. But it is The Member of Parliament for South Dine, Roxanne Nelson Dafiamekbo, lamented how the strike had broken the local economy, adding setting up a monitoring committee coupled with other strict measures would ensure activities of middlemen are eliminated. We we, so as part of the key measures, we will change the supply days from Saturday now to Tuesday. The fuel will come in on Tuesday or on Wednesday, so that on Wednesday they would have arrived will purchase their respective quantities and leave so that the economy, the market can flourish, the economy in the area can also boom. Meanwhile, the association has called off the strike and promised to resume their operations after the monitoring team is put together. Fred Kwame Asari for Joy News, Germany. <laughs> Now let's turn our attention to health and patients who are diagnosed of retinal detachment of the eye, suffer physical and emotional trauma. Besides late detection and reporting, there are few hospitals in Ghana with facilities to adequately manage the condition. And people in rural areas in particular have had to travel long distances all in a bit to seek medical care. But there's some good news, especially for infected persons in the northern sector as Comfo and Notchi Teaching Hospital acquires some new equipment. Farmer Samuel Ahiamble is being attended to by eye surgeon Dr. Kwesi Ahmed. The 55-year-old has a condition known as retinal detachment. I was cutting a tree with chainsaw machine and one of the branches hit my eye. 
After visiting a health facility to have the wound stitched, he was left with unbearable pain in the right eye. I can't stand the sun and I feel so much pain in the eye. The retina is a thin layer of light sensitive tissue on the back wall of the eye. Light is focused on the retina just like the film in a camera. It converts the image into signals and sends them to the brain. Occasionally, injury to the eye or head may cause a small tear in the retina. The tear peels the retina away like a bubble in wallpaper and this results in the condition known as retinal detachment. Sometimes patients that have this type of retinal detachment will present with flashes, floaters, you know, sometimes it's quite sudden. Other symptoms of retinal detachment are slight feeling of heaviness in the eye, an impression of veil or curtain over the field of vision. It can also come with sudden appearance and sensation of street lines appearing curved and finally blindness. A recent study in Nigeria revealed retinal detachment is a significant cause of blindness in Africa. It could be caused by conditions like diabetes, hypertension and sickle cell. Short-sightedness is linked to 67% of retinal detachment cases. Delayed diagnosis and treatment may affect outcome of management. Surgery result is usually good if it's done early. Under the Himalayan Cataract Project, the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital has received equipment to treat all retinal ailments. It's supported by a team from Moran Eye Center, University of Utah, Dr. Eric Hansen. And so to do surgery, we use various techniques to reattach the retina and keep it attached during the healing period so that it heals properly. It's believed the new equipment will be able to treat retina-related eye conditions. Dr. Paul Benstein. In less than five days, we've done 14 major surgeries, and all we are very pleased at the results that we have had. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. Well, that'll be it for the news update. We have a lot more news.